folks and welcome to another video from a plain truth well it's time for me to get my head bashed coalition of peeps here watching this because we need to bring light some other evidence showing that the bible when everybody talks they talk about the bible the king's james version is generally what they're referring to has anybody gotten into who made the king james version bible why did they make the king james version uh, Bible. Why is it the authorized version, which is the first English transla translation of the Christian Bible for the Church of England, begun in 1604, completed in 1611? 1611, 711, 6 plus 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 1, 1. All the sacred numbers are there, secret societies. The books of King James Version include 39 books of the Old Testament, an intertestamental testamental section containing 14 books of the Apocrypha and the 27 books of the New Testament. The Apocrypha is 20 lost Bibles or 20 Bibles that were not included, including the Nag Hammadi Bibles, including the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Ethiopian Bible, the Geneva Bible. There's over 20 to 30 Bibles, folks, but they talk about the Bible, and this is the one they're talking about. So it was printed by Robert Barker, the King's Printer. He was the third translation in the English approved by the English Church authorities. The first had been the Great Bible commissioned by the reign of King Henry VIII in 1535. And the second had been the Bishops of Bibles commissioned by the reign of the Queen of England in 1568. In 1604, King James convened the Hampton Court Conference where a new English version was conceived in response to the problems of the earlier translations, per translations perceived by the Puritans, a faction of the Church of England. The translation, translation is noted for its, quote, majesty of style, end quote, and has been described as one of the most important books in the English culture and the driving force into the shaping of the English-speaking word. A big deal. By the first half of the 18th century, the authorized version had become effectively unchallenged as the English translation used in Anglican and English Protestant churches. All right, so let's get a little more into King James here. King James is 6 and 1. At 57 years and 246 days, James reign in Scotland, where is Trump from, Scotland, was longer than those of any of the predecessors. He achieved most of his aims in Scotland, but faced great difficulties in England, including the gunpowder plot in 1605. That's the movie V for Vendetta. It was all about the gunpowder plot by the Jesuits. Please watch it and learn. And repeated conflicts with the English Parliament. Parliament. Under James, the, quote, golden <coughs> age of Elizabethan literature and drama That's continued right. with writers such as William Shakespeare, John Donne, Ben Jonson, and Sir Francis Bacon. He sponsored the, uh, King James sponsored the translation of the Bible in English that would be later be named after him, the authorized King James Version. So here we see that uh, this was from 1597. King James' visit to Denmark, a country familiar with witch hunts, sparked an interest in the study of witchcraft, which he considered a branch of theology. Hmm. He attended the North Berwick Witch Trials, the first major persecution of witches in Scotland under the Witchcraft Act of 1563. Several people were convicted of using witchcraft to send storms against James' ships, most notably Agnes Sampson. James became obsessed with the threat posed by witches and wrote a demonologue in 1597, a track inspired by his personal involvement that opposed the practice of witchcraft and that provided background material for Shakespeare's tragedy of Macbeth. James personally supervised the torture of women accused of being witches. Let's read that again. King James, who wrote the King James Bible version allegedly, personally supervised the torture of women accused of being witches. Wikipedia cannot be wrong. All right, so let's get into Francis Bacon and the King James Bible. The 1611 King James Bible is ornamented with Bacon's symbols, and in my own special copy of the record edition, also dated 1611, these symbols are rosicrucianly marked to call the attention to the initiate, call the attention of the initiated. 
to them and to tell them that the 1611 Bible is without possibility of doubt one of Bacon's books. When Bacon was born, English as a literary language did not exist, but once he died, he had succeeded in making the English language the noblest vehicle of thought ever possessed by mankind. This he accomplished merely by his Bible and his Shakespeare, Edward D. Lawrence. There's more. The first edition of the King James Bible, which was edited by Francis Bacon and prepared under Masonic supervision, bear, bears more Mason's marks than the Cathedral of Strasbourg. This was Manley Hall, who was himself a 33-degree Freemason, that he made in a lecture of the Rosicrucian and Masonic origins of 1929. Uh, this is by A.E. Loosely. Uh, I own a set of Encyclopedia Americana, 14, 1941, which was the counterpart of the Britannica in size and number of volumes. Under Bacon, I find a generous four-page article uh, from Harvard University that mentioned Bacon's full literary activities, but not a word on the Holy Bible. Then under, quote, Holy Bible, dozens of pages by William Barry Smith, and under King James Version, a record of the 47 translators, including three or four ancient engraved divines, who worked seven years on the project, but again, no word of Bacon. The revised translation of the Bible was undertaken as a national work. It was carried out under the personal supervision of the king, but every record of the proceedings has disappeared. The British Museum does not contain a manuscript connected with the proceedings of the translators. In the record office have been preserved the original documents referring to important proceedings of that period. The parliamentary, judicial, and municipal records are, on the whole, in a complete condition, but ask for any records connected with the authorized version of the Bible, and the reply is, quote, we have none. And yet it is reasonable to suppose that manuscripts and documents of such importance would be preserved. Where are they to be found? For the, the new edition of the Bible, he issued a personal set of rules. This is the King James. The translators were to follow and order revisions to proceed, although he never contributed a farthing to its cost. Work began in 1607 and took a committee of 47 men, some say records 54, others say 50, two years and nine months, to rewrite the Bible and make it ready for the press. Each man received 30 shillings per week for his contribution. Upon its completion in 1609, a remarkable event occurred. The translators handed over the revisor's manuscript of what now is, now is called the King James Bible, or the Bible, to King James for his final personal approval. Quote, it was self-evident that James was not competent to check their work and edit it, so he passed the manuscripts on to the greatest genius of all time, Sir Francis Bacon. Bacon was a man of many talents, a lawyer, linguist, and composer. He mastered every subject he undertook, mathematics, geometry, music, poetry, painting, astronomy, classical drama, poetry, philosophy, history, theology, and architecture. Many aims and purposes. He was the father of modern science, the remodeler of modern law, the patron of modern democracy, and possible, the re possibly the reviver of Freemasonry. Now, there's two Freemasonries. There's Scottish Rite Freemasonry and the York Freemasonry. They didn't distinguish which one. His life and works are extensively documented and his intellectual accomplishments widely recognized, particularly in academic circles. Uh, it goes on that he was, uh, he personally recorded that while in Paris, he created a secret cipher system that could be inserted into a document without arousing suspicion. While living in Europe, Francis Bacon was initiated into the mysterious order of the Knights Templar, the Red Cross, and learnt a very special secret. Before he returned to London, he traveled to France, Italy, Germany, and Spain, and at the age of 20, completely devoted himself to the study of law. From his understanding of the secret information he had learned during his initiation into the Knights Templar, he conceived the idea of reactivating various secret societies, and in 1580 founded the secret Rosacross Literary Society in Gray's Inn. Later in the same year, he founded the Lodge of the Free and Accepted of Speculative Masons, also at Gray's Inn. On June 25, 1607, Sir Francis Bacon was appointed Solicitor General and Chief Advisor to the Crown. He had presented new ideas to the government for the reformation of the Church and was officially instructed to commence restructuring the Bible. Research in the Records Office of the British Museum revealed that the original documents still exist, which refer to important proceedings associated with Sir Francis Bacon's involvement with the editing of both the Old and New Testaments. They revealed that he personally selected and paid the revisers of the New Testament who completed their task under the instructions of Bacon's longtime friend, 
Dr. Andrew. The first English language manuscripts of the Bible remained in Bacon's possession for nearly a year during that time. Solomon's temple was built by demons, um, wasn't it? Well, I've been an architect myself, and, mm. and, but it's obvious for anyone. When you build a building, it's on foundations. Yes. But once you build the building itself, the foundations are covered up. Yeah. But you can't have a building without foundations. That's the first thing that has to be laid. Yes. Mm. So he was a founder. He's mm. covered up. Yeah. And he knew this principle, so he covered mm. it up deliberately. Mm. Um, but it's still possible, you know, somebody might get to the building on how it works. I know there are foundations underneath, and they might start to look full of the sea yes. on their life. Bacon also encoded secret information in both the Old and New Testament. An ancient document recorded that the true history of early Christianity was known to the initiates of the Order of the Knights Templar, having originally been imparted to the Hugh de Pans by the Grand Pontiff of the Order of the Temple of Nazarene sect, one named Theocletes, after which it was learned by some knights in Palestine. Uh, at the completion of the editing, Sir Francis Bacon and King James had a series of meetings to finalize editorial matters associated with the new Bible. It was at this time King James ordered a dedication to the king to be drawn up and included in the opening pages. He also wanted the phrase, quote, appointed to be read in the churches to appear on the title page. This was an announcement clarifying that King James had personally given the church special command for his particular version of the Bible to be used in preference to the vast array of Greek and Latin Bibles current at the time. His personal, his reason was personal as King James had previously instructed the revisers to defend the position of the king in their restructuring of the text. This was seen as an attempt to distance the Protestant Bible from the Catholic version. The Protestant versions of the Bible are thinner by seven books than the Catholic version, and the variant churches have never agreed on a uniform Bible. In their translation of 1 Peter 2.13, uh, the revisers changed the phrase, the emperor as supreme, to the king as supreme, because King James Bible is written to support the authority of the king. The later church often returned, referred to it as one from authority. Bandit later came to be presented as it's officially authorized. In subsequent revisions, the word authorized found its way into the title page and later still came to be printed on the cover, giving King James' new Bible a false sense of authenticity. All right, a little more on uh, Sir Fran, the Baconian method. He did not have a long-lasting influence. The general idea of the importance and possibility of skeptical methodology makes Bacon the father of scientific method. This marked a new turn in the rhetorical and theoretical framework for science, the practical details of which are still central in debates about science and mythology today. Uh, and then, because of his first receipt of the Queen's Council designation, it was conferred in 1597 when Queen Elizabeth reserved Bacon as her legal advisor. After the accession of King James in 1603, Bacon was knighted. He was a knight on the court of London. Who is he serving, folks? Well, let's take a look at this document here. Uh, scores of volumes have been written to establish that Sir Francis Bacon has been the real offer of plays and signed as per popularly ascribed to Shakespeare. It was in recognition of Bacon's intellectual accomplishment that King James turned over to him the translator's manuscripts, what is now known as the King James Bible, for presumable purpose of checking, editing, or revising him. The documents reign, remained in his hands for nearly a year, but no information is had concerning what had occurred in that time. Regarding the work, William T. Smedley writes, quote, It will eventually be proved that the whole scheme of the authorized version of the Bible was Francis Bacon's, no doubt. And let's take a look at the secret teachings here. This is from uh, the library of the University of Los Angeles. 
and it's over 432 pages put out by the Colorado Freemasons Lodge. Here you can see in my title here, coloradofreemasonslodge.org. Francis Bacon and his secret society goes into great lengths about Francis Bacon and his secret societies, folks. So there is no doubt that the King James Version of the Bible was written by Francis Bacon, a Freemason, Rosicrucian, Knight of the Queen and the King, and it's, it's all been a great big lie to think that it's from, you know, God's hands and God's words and Jesus' scriptures to the church, to the king, to the people, <coughs> the Bible. So hopefully all you King James Version Bible people, you'll research this more, find out, discern, and judge for yourself. But would you be wanting to put all your faith, all your trust in the Bible written by Freemasons who rule secret societies, who are the elite? Just think about it. All right, plain truth out. Hope I haven't pissed too many of you Christians off. To those of you who are still with us, I appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video, and love one another. Peace. Pretty crazy.